Hi everyone, my name is Olivia. Thank you again for joining us. Today we're going to be doing a quick meditation on Wednesday's Gospel. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. So a quick explanation of Vectu Divina, if you don't already know what it is. In its basic form, it's reading the Bible as a form of prayer. It consists of four parts. Lectio, meaning to read. Meditatio, meaning to meditate. Oratio, meaning to pray. And contemplatio, meaning to contemplate. So I'd like to invite you, wherever you are or whatever you're doing right now, to stop and take a few deep breaths. If possible, close your eyes. We're going to begin this prayer by inviting the Holy Spirit into this space and into the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, teach us to pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that this time with you bears the fruit of wisdom and understanding. We are open to whatever message you would like for us to receive today. Let our ears be opened to hear your word. I'm going to read the passage one time through, and I invite you to just listen. Try not to focus too hard and just look for a word or phrase that sticks out to you for any reason. He summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither walking stick, nor sack, nor food, nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. And as for those who do not welcome you, when you leave that town, shake the dust from your feet in testimony against them. Then they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and curing diseases everywhere. I'm going to read it again, and this time try focusing a little more on that word or phrase that stuck out to you. What is the Lord trying to help you see with this? He summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, take nothing for the journey, neither walking stick, nor sack, nor food, nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. And as for those who do not welcome you, when you leave that town, shake the dust from your feet and testimony against them. Then they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and curing diseases everywhere. Here Jesus is speaking directly to his disciples. Imagine you are one of them. What kind of questions are running through your head? How do you feel about this calling? He summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, take nothing for the journey, neither walking stick nor sack nor food, nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. And as for those who do not welcome you, when you leave that town, shake the dust from your feet and testimony against them. Then they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and curing diseases everywhere. What do you think the Lord is trying to share with you out of this passage? What is he calling you to understand? Jesus, I trust in you. What a powerful prayer. 
It's the words inscribed with the image of Jesus' divine mercy. And I know that many of us say them all the time as an offering to God. But how often does God require us to really live out those words? Imagine the scene. Jesus has just told his closest followers, 12 men, just like you and me, that he has granted them immense power, power to literally cure diseases and drive out demons. How cool is that? Then comes the hard part. He says, take nothing for the journey, neither walking stick, nor sack, nor food, nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. Okay, you think. That'll make this whole traveling thing a lot more difficult. And you'd be right. How many of us would agree to go on a long trip, leaving behind our jobs, our friends and family, our homes, and also agree to pack no supplies with us? That's exactly what Jesus is asking of his disciples. In our world today, we are taught that we need to grow up to fend for ourselves. Almost everything we do is aimed at building our lives, going to school to get a good job that pays good money so we can feed and clothe and care for ourselves and our families. This is exactly what the disciples had spent their lives doing up to this point. But I invite you to really consider this. If Jesus had asked you to give all that up because you don't need it, because he would provide for you in your every need, would you say yes? We are all called to be disciples. Jesus has tasked every one of us with a mission, to go and proclaim the good news of the kingdom of heaven. Now, Jesus may not be calling all of us right now to drop our lives and travel the world with no provisions, although that very well could be your calling, but he is calling us to trust in him in our day-to-day -day lives. Matthew 6:34 says, therefore do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. The church has given us so many great examples of saints who lived this to the extreme, spending their lives serving God penniless, trusting that day to day he would provide for them. Saints like Ignatius of Loyola, who gave up his societal status and willingly chose to live his life among the poor, preaching and ministering to them. So let us look to our brothers and sisters in heaven who have succeeded before us and pray to the Lord that he gives us the courage to really trust in him, in the big and in the small. I'd like to end this time with a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time you have given us to pray and meditate upon your word. Thank you for the messages you have revealed to us in the quietness of our hearts. And we ask that you help us to apply what you have given us to our own lives by way of action. Help us to go forth and spread your good news. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me on our social media. I hope you have a great week and see you again soon.